Hello there, my name's Scott, and today I'm going to be doing a review on the Gill Mods 360 Genesis Atomizer, which I've received directly from the manufacturer. Now, they don't have their own website, but they do have a Facebook page here. The address is shown there. And on there, you will find a list of resellers. Okay, before I start, I must point out I did receive it free of charge for the purpose of conducting a review, but my opinion of the product made true, honest, and accurate, as always. Okay, let's go straight ahead and show you in a bit more detail. Okay, so here I have the 360, which is a Genesis style rebuildable atomizer, and I believe this is manufactured in Italy by an Italian modder. So, what I'm going to do now is just go through some of the main features, then I'll break it down, show you how it all fits together, and then finally I'll show you how I've been getting my one all set up. Okay, so it's mainly made out of 304 grade stainless steel, and it seems to be a very nicely built and very sturdy atomizer. I've got no complaints with the build quality at all. It's 22 millimeters in diameter. And on the base, you're going to find a 510 connector, some engraving there, and also your serial number. And the tank is made out of Pyrex and holds around 3 millilitres of e-liquid. With the top cap removed, you can see you have two negative terminals, which use an Allen key and two wick holes. Now, the wick holes are 2.5 millimetres in diameter. And as you have two negative terminals and two wick holes, this means you can set it up with either a single coil a dual coil or a u-wick it also comes with this a uh, little black rubber bung so if you are going to set up with just a single coil then you can block the other hole off the positive terminal is a brass sort of a thumb screw i suppose you call it and just above that you're going to find a fill hole and the top cap is held in position by a single o-ring but it does do a very good job of holding it nice and securely The top cap has this wedding cake design and on the very top you're going to find space for your 510 drip tip. Now it does have two air holes, sort of. Now the first air hole here, which is one millimetre in diameter, you can see it's been drilled all the way through, but the second one has only been drilled partially through. Now they've done this for a specific reason because if you like to have just a single coil set up, you don't need to have two air holes. But for people who do like to have a dual coil set up, you will need to get what I would imagine will be a one millimeter drill bit and just finish off the uh, the hole there. So it's basically acting as a sort of pilot hole. Inside you're gonna find a reduced chamber and as you can hopefully see, it's actually been reduced for both wicks. Okay, so here I have the 360 sort of broken down to its uh, bare bones. And what I'll do now is just very quickly show you how it all fits together. Okay, so to assemble the 360, the first thing I'm going to do is just grab hold of the base here and one of the O-rings and just place that inside. And then you can take the Pyrex tank and just slide it into the base. And then you can take the other O-ring, place that into the atomizer deck section. Then grab hold of the tank and screw the parts together. You can then take the brass rod, slide it through the centre there and just screw it all the way down. And then finally, you can take one of the brass nuts and just uh, take a note of the actual sort of shape and direction I'm putting this on. Place that over the top and screw it all the way down. Nice and tight. And then finish it off by replacing the second brass nut. Okay, so now it's all assembled. I'm going to quickly go through how I've been getting my one all set up. So for my wick, I've been using some 400 mesh, which I cut at a length of 40 millimeters by a width of 20 millimeters. I then rolled it up to form a nice tube and oxidized it by holding it in a hot flame for around sort of 10 seconds or so. And for my wire, I'm gonna be using some 0.30 millimeter canthal. Now, as you can hopefully see, I've already attached the wire to the negative terminal there and inserted the wick. And I like to add a syringe down the center of the wick just to strengthen it up makes it a little bit easier when it comes to wrapping the coils. And what I'm gonna do now is just wrap some four or five coils and then finish off by trapping it in between the two brass nuts there.
And once it's uh, uh, tightened up, you just make it look a little bit neater. And what you should have is something that looks uh, a little bit like that. Now to get rid of the excess pieces of wire, you can use a pair of cutters, but I like to just uh, apply a bit of tension, give it a spin and a wiggle, and it should snap off nice and clean. Now before you fill the tank up with e-liquid, it's always very important to make sure the coils are going to light up nice and evenly and at the same time. And normally at this stage, I'd be demonstrating what's called the pulse technique, which is a method for sort of eliminating hot spots and making sure your coals are working correctly. Uh, but this is one of those rare occasions where everything seems to be working straight away, so I'm going to leave it as it is. And as you can see there, everything's all nice and rosy. Okay, so let's uh, fill the tank up with some meat liquid. And hopefully when I press this, we should get some uh, nice vapour. Okay, and then uh, finally all I need to do now is add the top cap. And uh, like with any Genesis Atomizer, just make sure that the air hole is going to line up directly in front of the wick. And that will get you the, uh, the most amount of vapour. Okay, so that is the 360. Let's go ahead, see what it vapes like. Okay, so that was the 360. And what I'll do now is go ahead and show in action. So I'm going to be using it on my Nemesis. The battery came with the charger around five minutes ago, so it should still be reading around 4.2 volts. Not too sure what the resistance of the coil is, but I'm going to take a guess at around one ohms. And I've got a tank filled up with some 18 milligram strength tobacco flavoured e-liquid. It's just a PG e-liquid. Okay, so this is the 360. So as you can see, like vapor wise, getting plenty of vapour out of it. But like I always say, just bear in mind that the amount of vapour you're going to get will be totally down to how you've got it set up with regards to what sort of resistance the coil is, the type of e-liquid you're using, whether it's a VG or PG e-liquid, what sort of voltage or wattage you're pushing through it, etc, etc. But nevertheless, with the setup I've got here, getting uh, plenty of vapour. Uh, Flavour-wise, again, excellent flavour, exactly what you'd expect from a Genesis Atomizer that's all been uh, set up nicely. Now, I know a lot of people say that a reduced chamber gives you a far, far more sort of flavourful experience with a Genesis Atomizer. And uh, I think it's going to come all down to sort of personal preference, really, because in my experience, I tend to prefer the flavour from an Atomizer or a Genesis Atomizer, which has a sort of quite open uh, top cap. Um, so, like I said, it is going to be um, down to sort of personal preference. I wouldn't say that one is better than the other. It's just it's a slightly different flavour. It's the only way I can sort of really describe it. And for me, if I have a top cap which is a little bit more sort of open, I find the flavour to be a little bit more sort of richer, I suppose. What you will find, though, is that uh, with a reduced top cap, the actual uh, warmth of the vapour will come out a lot warmer compared to like. Uh, compared to a more sort of open top cap and uh, this is quite a warm vape I have got a fairly low resistance atom or fairly low resistance coil on there but even if I did add a few more coils make it a little bit higher resistance it's still going to come out quite warm so if I was going to say that one was a really cold vape five was a really hot vape this is definitely probably around sort of probably around sort of four something like that uh, the draw as you might expect, it's a one millimeter air hole, so it is a pretty tight draw. Um, I do find though it's something that you get used to quite quickly. I can go from a very open draw to a very tight draw now, and after sort of five minutes, I just get used to it, and it feels sort of quite natural. So um, maybe it's just because I've tried lots of lots of different atomizers with lots of different sort of air hole sizes. I don't tend to stick to uh, one particular sort of size now. So for me anyway, it's, it's quite easy to get used to after you just sort of vape on it for a few minutes. If you do prefer a more looser area draw, then it's probably not going to be the one for you. Like if I was going to say one was a, a really loose draw, five was a really tight draw, it's definitely around sort of four again. Now it would be slightly looser if you drilled out the other sort of optional air hole. 
uh, but it's only really worth doing that if you want to do sort of dual coil setup so you have air passing over both coils. Now I know a lot of people may say why didn't it come with both air holes already drilled out but if you're only going to use it in a single coil setup then having the extra air, having the extra air hole doesn't sort of do you any favours at all really because obviously the air is not going to be passing directly over the coil all it's going to really do is just give you a, a very or a lot area draw. For me I think the manufacturer should give people the choice of either a uh, one air hole top cap or two air hole top cap because I'd hate to think of somebody buying one of these atomizers, getting it home, drilling out the, uh, the, op the optional air hole and then slipping, causing a big scratch or, or maybe even like, the drill bit snapping off etc etc of course then basically you're buggered so if the manufacturer could give people the option of one air hole or two air two I can't speak today one air hole or two air holes then uh, that's definitely going to be the, uh, the best option. Ease of setup, for me personally I find it to be quite an easy atomizer to set up. I've got plenty of room to manoeuvre under the hood. Um, the wick hole is quite far away from the actual terminal so you are going to get quite a long piece of wire coming from the end of your wick onto the terminal from both the negative and the positive. Now this isn't an issue as long as your wick is sort of fully oxidised uh, and it's not too much of an issue as long as the, uh, the wire doesn't glow all the way up to the terminal, that's what I find in my experience anyway. And the only time I really sort of get the, uh, the wire glowing like um, across uh, from that space between the wick and the terminal is when I put in a sort of fully charged battery. And then after sort of 10 minutes or so of vapour, once the voltage has dropped down a little bit, then everything's good to go. So if you do put a sort of freshly charged battery in there, you find that your wires are sort of glowing a little bit sort of past the wick, so to speak. You know, then you will have to sort of give it a, a little bit of a pin or a tip for uh, the first sort of 10 minutes of vaping, something like that. But after that, you know, you don't get any sort of problems whatsoever. The only time I ever really notice uh, a problem is if your wick isn't sort of fully oxidised, and you can see the wire is glowing from the wick all the way up to the terminal. If it touches the terminal, then you are going to get a nasty taste. If it doesn't touch the terminal, then you should be good to go. Build quality, um, I've had no complaints with it at all, it seems to be a very nicely made atomizer, nice and sturdy, all the parts fit together beautifully, no problems there whatsoever. I did notice on one of the forums that there were a few posts from people who have bought one in the past to say that I was a little bit unhappy with the, uh, with the build quality, there's sort of little things wrong with it. Uh, all I can say though is that the one that I've received you know, came to me in a perfect condition. Now those posts, uh, I think this atomizer has been out for quite a while, and those posts were sort of quite old judging by the date of them. So hopefully any sort of little uh, issues they had at that time have been uh, resolved now. Um, I know a lot of people may say, oh, we are reviewers, so they're also going to make sure the one you, you get is all perfect, because obviously you're going to be doing a review in it. But you'd be surprised at just how much stuff I receive for a review, where either you know, it's completely broken or it doesn't work, or there's sort of you know, major problems like with the finish, like big scratches and that, and I've had to sort of send it back because... You know, one, I can't really uh, review it if it's completely broken. And secondly, I'd like to give the uh, supplier or the manufacturer uh, an opportunity to actually sort of rectify the issue before I sort of uh, do the video. So, you know, even though most people would think, oh, if it's a full reviewer, they're always going to make sure it's perfect. Trust me, that really is uh, not the case. And you'd be surprised at just how much crap I have received in the past. Now, uh, to summarise this, I, um, seems to be a very well-made atomizer. Looks slightly odd. Not everybody may like the uh, sort of wedding cake appearance. It's going to come down to personal preference. Personally, I quite like it. Makes it a little bit different to your other sort of, uh, sort of standard-looking Genesis atomizers. It certainly performs well. You've got the option for a single coil, dual coil, or U-wick. Uh, you've got the reduced chambers there, if that's what you like. And holds uh, quite a nice amount of e-liquid as well, three milliliters, and the tank's made out of Pyrex, so you can use any e-liquid. You haven't got to worry about anything uh, cracking it. Uh, not too sure what else I can tell you about it. If you fancy trying it out for yourself, then uh, visit their Facebook page, and on there you should be able to find a list of resellers. Thank you very much for watching. Also, come along and visit my website at www.esigreviews.com. That's e-sig-reviews.com. Cheers, guys. Happy vaping. See you later.